Come on in. Hi, Dr. Crow. Hi. Thank you so, so much for taking the time yeah. and bringing me with me today. My pleasure. My name is Christina Gutierrez with AMJ. And how are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Well, first off, welcome to College Station. Um, I know you've just moved down here from Fort Worth. We're really excited to have you here at CSMA. I love, this is one of my favorite practices to actually work at and sell at. Glad and to hear that. I had a really good relationship with Dr. Lovett, so I'm really excited to continue the same relationship with you as well. Sounds good. How has your transition been moving from Fort Worth to College Station? How are you settling in? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been pretty seamless. I've been here for a couple of months now, uh, and the practice seems really good, pretty efficient. Uh, good. Patients, patient volume hasn't really declined much, so yeah, everything's good. Okay, that's awesome. And are you moving down here by yourself, with family? Uh, with, with family. Yeah. Oh, what's your family look like? Any kids? Yeah, we got two little ones. Oh, yeah, how old are they? 13 and 11. Oh, are yeah. they in school uh, here in College Station? Uh, yeah, they are. Middle school and elementary. So have you all kind of acclimated to the Aggie culture? Did you all watch the Bama we're, game we're, last we're, weekend? We're getting used to it. Yeah, we watched <laughs> the game. Yeah. Good. Did you go in person? Did you watch it live no, on TV? No, we watched it on TV. And how are your kids? Are they loving the Aggie football? Is that Kazada your kid's favorite idol now? <laughs> Not yet, but it's, it's getting there. Well, that's yeah. good. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you're having a good transition here. I'm glad you're enjoying College Station. It sounds like it's treating you well. Well, I understand you're a very busy person. You know, now you're here working at the largest multi-specialty clinic in College Station, which is a huge accomplishment that you should be very proud of. Again, I know you're very busy. Your time is very valuable, and I want to be very respectful of it and ensure that I'm not throwing your schedule off too much. Does 20 minutes still work for you today? Yeah, we got about 15, 20 minutes. Here. Okay, awesome, perfect. That's all the time that I need. Let's make sure we kind of stay on track with that. I'll go ahead and go over today's agenda. Very flexible for today. My main goal here is really just to get to learn more about you and how you're adjusting to the practice and any differences you've seen from your practice back at UNT versus the practice here. Next, along with that, we'll kind of go into some goals that you have for the practice now. I'm sure coming into a new space, there's a lot of things that you did like that you want to take from your old practice and some things that you're trying to change here. So we'll kind of touch on that. And okay. finally, Dr. Crow, if after we finish our meeting, you feel like this would be a good fit, I'd love to develop a relationship partnership with you and really um, continue prescribing Repatha for those patients that need it to help improve the efficiency of this practice and of okay. course, help treat those patients as best as possible, if that sounds all good to you. Sounds good. All right, awesome. So before we get into that, again, my main goal here is to really be a sponge and to really learn about you, your old practice, this current practice. But before we get into that, I just want to, again, be very conscious of your time. Is there anyone else that we need to consider for this decision-making process? Should we come to the decision that Rapatha would continue to be a good fit for the office? Um, no, I'm, I'm the sole decision-maker. Works for me. Well, that sounds good. In that case, we'll keep on rolling along with this meeting. Like I mentioned earlier, I'd really like to gain some insight on your kind of office workflow now. Excuse me, doctor. Yep. Your amgen competition is in the hall. I need to speak to you real quick. Okay. Excuse me. Mm, no problem. Problems. Do you need to any further to take that or are you good here? No, we're good. Okay, awesome. So as I was mentioning, I'm really just trying to get some insight into your office's workflow. Would you be okay answering some questions and kind of talking to me sure. about that? Okay, so for starters, you know, I've spoken with a lot of doctors and physicians, and I always like to start off by asking them this one question. With your experience, you know you've worked at multiple practices. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had to deal with a lot of sales reps before me. Now, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what did you like and dislike about your last rep? Um, last rep, half of it? Because we um, no, just last sales rep in general. Like, are there tendencies? Mm -hmm. Again, this is just to help me better serve mm -hmm. you in the office of things that you like that they did, yeah. things that kind of turn you off and turn you away yeah. from the brand or the drug. For the most part, I've had really good relationships with the sales representatives I've worked with. Uh, what, what we typically look for is information on new medications. Obviously, I'm, I'm very eager to try uh, new technologies, right. especially in, in some of these innovative medications that come out. Um, and I've dabbled a little bit in, in RIPAP as well um, during the residency program. Um, I, I like the uh, representatives to be honest and present credible data uh, and information that's relevant to our practices. Yeah. 
Okay, that's awesome. And thank you again for sharing that. Like I said earlier, this information just really helps me better learn how to best serve you and your office moving forward. Now, in terms of you and how you're feeling, you know, it's a new practice. It can be kind of intimidating coming in. How are you feeling taking over Dr. Lovett's patients? I feel fine. Um, the patients have been, uh, fortunately, we haven't had a whole lot of turnover. There's going to be some adjustment that's right. going to take place. Uh, obviously, you know, a new physician, new way of conducting business and, and seeing patients, new therapy. So uh, I do anticipate a little bit of adjustment period, but for the most part, it's, it's fairly smooth. That's great. And most of your patients, what I'm seeing, you're seeing about 40 to 50 patients per day. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that correct? Uh, that's about right. Yeah. Okay. How are you feeling? You know, CSMA is a very large practice. I don't know how big your practice was back at UNT, but that's a pretty hefty load of patients coming in and mm -hmm. out of the office every day. How are you feeling with that ratio? Do you feel any sort of stress or overwhelmingness when it comes to that no, that's, ratio? That's pretty common. Okay. Yeah. Great, great, great. Glad to hear that you're adjusting well. Now, a lot of these patients, from my understanding that you're seeing, not just yourself, but in the practice in general, a lot of them are high cholesterol patients, with a lot of them having had already one previous cardiovascular event. What is your current protocol when it comes to dealing with these high cholesterol patients? Well, I don't have a lot of patients that have previous cardiovascular events. Okay. Uh, we have some, um, at least the ones that I've, I've been able to follow up with. Uh, but the overwhelming majority of them do have some cardiometabolic disorder, whether okay. it's elevated lipids or uh, diabetes. Um, and the treatments for those patients are typically with diabetic patients. We use various um, glycemic control medications with okay. the, uh, lipid management patients. We use statins for the most part and then adjust the doses uh, as appropriate or use other therapies if we need to uh, add on uh, uh, options. Okay, that's great. And so, like you mentioned, you said a lot of your patients haven't had any cardiovascular disease prior. And you did mention earlier that you do sometimes prescribe repatha mm -hmm. to those patients. So, on average, about 30% of patients are actually intolerant to statins. So, is there any reason why you aren't using repatha more than you already do? Well, I've only been here two months, and most of the patients are already on therapy. And uh, so far, of the patients we've seen, uh, some of them, uh, most of them are are controlled with statins. Uh, and the ones that are not controlled on statins, you, we adjust the dose. Um, and sometimes the patients complain about the therapy, not necessarily you know the side effects being due to therapy. So we'll adjust the dose and, and you know go from there. If the side effects continue, then we'll make adjustments. Um, but yeah, there, there are a handful of patients that are also on Repatha from, uh, okay. from previous uh, treatment options. Uh, so we just continue that therapy as well. Okay, and what percent, again, like you mentioned earlier, and it's pretty not, uh, well known in the community mm -hmm. that lipid management is really important when it comes to these high cholesterol sure. patients. What percentage would you say, just on the statins alone, are seeing results with their lipid levels in the sense that they're getting their lipid levels below 70 and consistently staying there? It depends on the patients. I would say uh, roughly, you know, 50 to 70 percent of the patients on statins uh, in clinical settings are right. probably getting uh, to goal. Uh, most of them can get to goal if they can tolerate the medication. So some patients don't respond to statins. Some patients can't tolerate statins. So we have to adjust the doses and, and either switch to another agent right. um, or uh, lower the dose and add a secondary agent. Okay, and when you're, so you said you do sometimes prescribe Repatha, mm -hmm. what does that client look like, or excuse me, not client, patient, look like when you prescribe Repatha? Is it only if they're statin intolerant or if they're not able, you know, having those extreme muscle cramps, that is a huge side effect with statins that mm -hmm. sometimes steer doctors away from using yeah. it, or what does that kind of look like? All of the above. I'm, I'm open to Repatha. I, I read up on it when it, the medication was first approved. Uh, so the type of patients that I typically would initiate therapy on is that number one, uh, uh, I guess trigger being the lipid levels. Right. Uh, if the patient's lipid levels are high and they haven't been on statin therapy, obviously I'll initiate uh, statin first. Okay. And if the patient can't tolerate a statin or can't tolerate a high dose of a statin, they're still under control, then uh, I'll e either add sedia, the bembidoic acids, or even uh, Repatha also becomes an option. But I understand that you guys had some new study uh, on Repatha, which I'm not familiar with. So. Uh, Yes, and I'll touch a little bit on that later in the meeting. I have this very fancy uh, <laughs> template over here for you later on. Now, when it comes to prescribing new medication, as I'm sure you're aware, the process for insurance, the pre-approval process can be 
little bit of a pain. Um, what is something that I, as your sales rep, can do to make that pre-approval process easier for you and your office when it comes to prescribing? I know you said you're already using Repatha, but maybe not as often. So when prescribing Repatha more, what does that look like for you? From approval process, obviously, ideally, we would want everything to be approved. Right. <laughs> um, it's, and I understand there's a little bit of paperwork that's associated with it, so um, I'm curious to learn about the coverage in this area. Okay. Yeah. And lastly, Dr. Lovett, is there anything, you know, you're new to the office, anything that you have the goal of improving or that you wish was running more smoothly in your office? No, I mean, generally, I'm pretty aggressive with lipid management in general. Uh, so even though we have an LDL, uh, the ACC guidelines recommend an LDL goal of 70, uh, I try to push the high-risk patients, the ones with comorbidities, uh, to significantly below that. Okay. Um, and uh, Repatha seems to be an option for that, but I would love to hear more about the new studies, uh, the, the side effect profile, and yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you again for answering this question. These give me, or these answers really give me some good insight moving forward. Just to recap what we talked about, you're having a great transition here to College Station, which I'm really happy to hear. You're feeling pretty comfortable transitioning with those new patients. Big emphasis on getting those lipid levels down is what I'm hearing, whether that's with statins or with Repatha. And um, you're using, or excuse me, most of your clients are actually on controlled statin therapy and really when you use Repatha is when they start to experience any of those uh, side effects, excuse me, from statins, whether that's muscle pain or their lipid levels are just not going down and big issue, or not issue, but concern for use, making sure that this medication is approved, of course. I mean, if we're going to be prescribing patients Repatha, we don't want them to have been paying thousands of dollars out of pocket just to get this right. prescription. Does all that sound about correct to you? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad that we're on the same page here. As I mentioned earlier, I have some more information here about Repatha that I'm pretty confident aligns pretty well with what you've kind of learned more previously about it and how it could help your office moving forward with these high cholesterol patients. Is Repatha still something that you're interested in learning more about? Yeah, absolutely. And so you've been prescribing Repatha. Are you pretty familiar and pretty knowledgeable about it? Or is there some, I what are your kind of um, the gaps, I would say, in the knowledge with Repatha? I have a general understanding of the uh, of the class uh, and general understanding of Repatha, some experience. I'm not opposed to using the medication, uh, but I'm not familiar with the newest study that came out. So okay. interested to learn more about that, the different patient population that it was studied in, and and then I'll weigh the options up to see you know if if that fits the needs of the practice. Okay, for sure. So before we get into that, I'll give you a little bit of background on us as a brand. So Amgen, we are one of the world's leading independent biotech companies, having reached over 100 million patients worldwide. One of our leading drugs, if you could guess, is actually Repatha, which as you know, is a breakthrough medication that actually lowers, dramatically lowers that LDL bad cholesterol, as well as reducing a patient's risk of a heart attack. It differs from a stat in the sense that it actually gets into the liver and helps the liver clear out that bad cholesterol, that mm -hmm. LDL, which in turn makes there be less LDL in the actual bloodstream. Whereas statins simply just help the liver um, not produce as much cholesterol and doesn't necessarily do anything. Sometimes it does, but not as well as Repatha to actually lower that LDL level. Now Repatha, and this is where I'm gonna be touching a little bit on the study, I'll show you this pamphlet here. So Repatha actually utilizes outcomes data, which is why the FDA had no hesitation in approving it for prescription back in 2015 when it went out on the market. Our study here, we had 27,000 patients, all of which who had some sort of cardiovascular disease, as well as lipid levels higher than 70. In addition, all of them were on the industry gold standard of statin at the highest dosage. However, none of their LDL levels were actually lowering. So what we found was that 60, there was a 63% of mean reduction in LDL levels already within 12 weeks, and that was with adding, adding, excuse me, adding on Repatha with the statin that these patients were already on. And with, in just under a year, we saw that there was 87% of patients who actually saw those LDL levels get below 70. Okay. Now, not only does Repatha lower those LDL levels as well as reduce a patient's risk of a heart attack, but it is also on the formulary. So it's gonna make it less expensive and generally get approved pretty quickly by the pharmacy benefit manager for both patients on commercial and Medicaid insurance, which is a huge deal because here at CSMA, I'm sure you're aware now that you've been here for a little bit, we have about half and half. Half of these right. patients are on commercial, half of these patients are on actually Medicaid. Right. So this, you know, Repatha, it makes it a cost-effective solution or into medication for not only your office but your patients as well. What were some of the uh, common uh, adverse events in this study? So for Repatha, since it is an injectable, most patients, they sometimes felt when first starting, 
effects of common cold, so might someone might have a running nose, maybe a headache. Also, some patients reported bruising at the okay. uh, injection site, maybe a little bit of redness. Normally went away within one to two days. But the biggest thing that we found with the side effects that patients were happy with Rivipatha, a lot of patients on the statin alone experiencing extreme muscle cramps and you know that's a huge problem when you're trying to live your everyday life a lot of these patients do live active lifestyles have high cholesterol due to genetics and they're not able to do what they love due to these muscle cramps and what they found with Verpatha they can deal with a little bit of swelling for a day or two and not have to experience those muscle cramps uh, is really helpful for them does that help answer that question it does it does uh, in terms of the adverse events of the Verpatha arm of the study versus the uh, placebo arm. Do you have any data on that just to see how much more the injection side issues were relative to that? I do not have any on that right now. I can definitely go back to my supervisor, gather that data, and next time that we meet, I'd be more than happy to bring that to share with you. Yeah, yeah okay. that'd be great. Great, great, great. So as you probably know, in the U.S. alone, every 40 seconds, someone suffers from a heart attack or a stroke, with one in three of those patients actually having another event that's going to reoccur. And that's a statistic that we don't have to, we would kind of accept it as a excuse me, society. And we really don't have to with solutions like Repatha. Now, I always like to leave my doctors with this one testimonial. It's one of our beloved customers, Mark Korzempa. He's actually a Purple Heart veteran as well. He also leads a very active lifestyle, manages his diet. However, he faced really high cholesterol and was on a variety of statins, but could just not get his lipid levels down any lower. Eventually, he did unfortunately suffer from a heart attack, so that's when his cardiologist actually put him on Repatha. And with Repatha, he was actually able to lower his lipid levels from 148 all the way down to 55. Mm -hmm. And he was kind enough to leave us with a quote. He said, now I get to enjoy the things that I love most, like swimming and skiing without any restrictions. And my favorite part that he says is that now the only, the only thing that I wish I could have done sooner or changed differently was get put on Repatha sooner. And I just think that's a great, you know, great point. Again, he leads a very active lifestyle. You know, he doesn't want to be experiencing these muscle cramps. And so any solution-oriented, cost-effective medication like Repatha that could change a lives just like Mark, we love to see yeah. it. So based on that information, Dr. Crow, do you have any questions or concerns about Repatha for me? Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned a little bit about the coverage. Uh, what does the coverage look like in this area? So it pretty well covered. It just kind of depends on, again, whether you're on commercial or Medicare. A lot of patients here, they have a copay card, $5, you go up to the pharmacy, they use that card, come back, and it's just a $5 out of cost. I can definitely, I'm not, again, insurance is not my department, I work in sales, but I'd be more than happy to get some more information, kind of breaking that more down. That's about the general rundown, though, when it comes to Repatha. All right. Does that help answer that for you? Sure. Okay, well, Dr. Crow, based on what we discussed today, specifically the clientele that you're seeing and some of the, not challenges that you're facing in the office, but ways that we can improve your high cholesterol patients, I am confident that Repatha can help in being able to treat both those patients that are statin intolerant and patients who just aren't able to get their lipid levels down. So this will consequently make the office more efficient and be able to see more patients without putting more stress on you as a doctor. Now, Dr. Crow, and you know, you already said you're prescribing Repatha. Can I get a commitment that you'll be able to prescribe Repatha more for the client, or excuse me, the patients that, you know, flip the clientele, their lipid levels aren't lowering and they're statin intolerant possibly? Yeah, th those patients whose lipids are not at goal and they're at high risk, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't have a problem uh, using Repatha. And I would appreciate if you can uh, at least provide uh, the adverse event data from, from the study just so I can have a better understanding of the safety profile of those medications. Okay, of course. So we're getting close to that 20 minute mark and I don't want to impede on any patient time or you know take away any break you may have. Can we set up another follow-up meeting so that I can bring that information yeah, to great. you? Okay, great. Does Monday at either 8 p.m. or 4 p.m. or excuse me, 8 a.m. or 4 p.m. sound uh, good? 4 p.m. is better. Awesome. Well, again, thank you Dr. Crow so much for meeting with me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your day thank and I will you. see you Monday at 4 p.m. Right. Nice Thank you. you so much, Dr. Crow. Nice job. Thank you.